everyone. Welcome to Central Lion High School for some Iowa high school postseason basketball action. As the Boyden Hall Comets come to town in the district semifinal round here of the uh, District 15. The Lions and Comets will meet tonight. We'll start here by taking a look at some of our stats. Boyden Hall comes into tonight's matchup 9 and 13 overall. They average 50.6 points per game. They shoot 39% from the field, average 27 rebounds a game, also average 10.3 assists and 5.5 steals. The Comets also shoot 64% from the free throw line, and they average 16.2 turnovers per game. For your Central Lion Lions, they are 19 and 1. I forgot to update that graphic. They are 19 and 1 overall. They average 78.1 points per game. They shoot 55% from the field. They average 34.2 rebounds per game, 18 and a half assists, and 9.3 steals per game. Central Lion also shoots 69% from the free throw line, and they average 10.9 turnovers per game. Central Lion head coach Ben Gerleman and myself sat down earlier today to talk about uh, the last regular season game of the year, which was last week Thursday, and tonight's matchup with the Comets. We'll have that interview now. Welcome back to the pregame show. We're being joined now by Central Lion boys head coach Ben Gerleman. Coach, thanks for joining us. Good, Jeff. Thanks for having me. All right, Coach, let's start by talking about the game from last Thursday uh, where we got the 91-53 to 53 win over Rock Valley. Uh, what did you think about that game? Well, I think it's been a long time since we played. That's what I think. <laughs> uh, you know, it's hard to believe it's been a week since we actually have been on the floor. But um, it, was a, it was a nice way to end our season. Yeah. Um, we played against a team that kind of threw a curveball at us the first time we played them, and I thought we did a nice job of reacting to all of that. And they even tried some more just unorthodox things during the game. And our kids just played really well. I mean, we, we got after them from the start. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, I, I think after the first quarter, most people probably would have thought there's no way Rock Valley could keep scoring like they did in the first mm -hmm. quarter. And they didn't. And, and our kids did keep scoring. So it was, it was a good game for us. Yeah, I thought so too. Uh, uh, good up and down the court. Um, you know, the three days or three games in four days. Um, and, you know, the second was it second in a row and three out of four weeks where we had three games. Yeah. Um, but uh, like you said, a good end of the season. Um, conference title, outright conference title. First yep. first uh, outright conference title, well, first any share or outright um, since uh, the 83-84 yep. season. So congratulations hey, on thank that. Thank you, thank you. Kids really deserved it. Yes, um, they do. You know, we don't talk about it. Uh, I didn't talk about it at all during the year because – I mean, it's it's really nice to to be able to do something like that, but it really wasn't important for us. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't. We didn't set out at the beginning of the year. Hey, we're going to win the conference. That's that was not what we wanted. Our, we've got different goals than that, and so uh, it was a byproduct of right. of what our goals were. But um, you know, we're thrilled. I think our kids were excited when they realized how long it had been. Mm -hmm. um, and and I even told them, you know, it's been that long, but in '84. The conference didn't look like it does now. No, no. And we didn't play double round robins. No. You know, so they played like eight games was it. And that was their conference season. So, you know, to, to have to play 18 conference games, it's that's a tough, tough thing to do it and is. win a conference. So it was, I was pretty proud of the kids. And uh, the Sioux line is unique. Not I wouldn't know. I don't know what the majority, but not all conferences do the double do the, the, the round robin double where you got to play everybody <laughs> twice home and away. Um, some, you know, some of the bigger conferences just can't. Right. There's too many teams. I, I honestly, I think we might be the only one mm. in the state where it is a true double round robin. You know, there's lots of them where you might play a couple teams twice and, mm -hmm. and others not. But um, it's it's very rare. Um, and normally our conference from top to bottom is pretty good. Correct. Um, which makes it even tougher. Yeah. Um, this year, you know, the bottom teams were a little down. Um, and, you know, obviously – the top two or three teams were really, really good. Um, so it made for some lopsided games throughout the year. But overall, it was a competitive year for us, and, and hopefully we've done enough to prepare ourselves for what's ahead. Yeah, and what is ahead is tonight with uh, Boyden Hall. Um, obviously a team we've seen twice already in the conference, but uh, they come to town for the district semifinals. Um, what are we going to see other comments? Oh, uh, well, they're a team that's gotten better. Um, what I will say is they don't have a single kid on their team that tries to be somebody they're not. Um, they all know what they're what they're capable of doing. They all play their roles. 
Uh, they play well together. Um, and as a result, they've really gotten better as the year went on. And so uh, I think we might be individually more talented than they are. Uh, but, you know, you only have to be really, really good or really, really bad on one night yeah. in the tournament. And um, so our kids are going to need to be focused. Um, more than likely, we'll see a lot of man-to-man -man from them. But uh, I, I wouldn't surprise me if they try to throw the kitchen sink at us. Yep. And similar to what Rock Valley did. Um, but I think we've seen enough that I think we should be fine. We just have to be focused and play hard, and we should be fine. Yeah, it's you know it's it's lose and go home, and your season's over. Yeah. So there's no holding back. Um, like you said, Coach uh, Hire is uh, you know done a good job. They're they're getting they're getting better. Um, you know, speak to you know, the fact that we've got a week off here. Um, you know, the girls had a week off. They started out on Tuesday a little slow, just getting yeah. you know it, was, it took a little bit to get back. You know, a week isn't a long time. But when you're used to playing at least two games, and for the most part three games a week, right. a week is a long time. That's That's been the biggest adjustment for the kids, I think. And I'm sure it was the same for the girls where, you know, we went from playing three games, three games, three games, and really not practicing mm -hmm. a ton to now you get done on a Thursday and now you got a week of, of practice. And um, I think our kids, for the most part, um, I think our boys have handled it fairly well. Uh, we gave them a couple days off. Um but like the the thing that we have been preaching to our kids is just you know we've got to stay focused. We've built a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. We really have since we lost. Um, everything about what we've done has been better. Practices have been better. Um, we've played better in games, and so we just want, we really tried to keep that um, focus going. And so as a result, it's been pretty good. Um, but. You know, we noticed last night in practice that I, the kids were sick of practice. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that they are fired up and ready to come out and play game tonight. Yeah, you know, the, especially the way we've, we've been playing, we've, we have we have a lot of momentum. We've been playing very, very well on all aspects of the game and then uh, to kind of shut it down. Not shut it down, but, you know, you, yeah. gotta, you don't know who you're going to play either right. right away. you got to wait for a game, and then you just yep. find out who your opponent is. And, uh, you know, it's not a – and then, then the girls play separate of you, which is yep. not normal. Um, for for uh, the you know ninety nine percent of the season right. and, you know so just a, a little bit different but um, what do you think will be some of the keys to Central Line coming away with the victory tonight? It's going to be all about the paint. Uh, we got to defend the paint and try to not let the ball get in there, and then we got to get it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we we got to play aggressive on offense. We got to get downhill and drive the ball. We've got to drive it into the paint. We got to throw it into the post. Um, I would expect that they're going to have guys that'll be doubling the post. And, and if they do, we got to be ready to kick it out and move the ball more and maybe get it back in the paint. So uh, on both ends of the floor, the paint's going to be a, a big deciding factor. But um, the other thing is they've, they've been shooting the ball better, and so we're going to have to contest shots. We can't let kids stand and shoot. Um, uh, you know, I th I, their percentage wasn't great the other night against Hinton, but it felt like uh, when I watched the game, it felt like every time that, that they got ball movement and they had a guy standing wide open, he made it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're not going to be able to do that. I mean, we've got to play some good defense. So um, it'll be good, hopefully a good start for our, our postseason, and hopefully our kids play well and we can we can keep playing. So well, that's the goal anyway. That is the goal. <laughs> Win in advance. Yes. Well, Coach, thank you for taking some time to join us today. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, we'll be back with more of our pregame show after these words from our sponsors. My grandpa came over here. That's why we're here. Just friendly people the staff, the whole group. Um, makes you feel like you're part of a family. And if you know a fireman at all, you need a banker. They have their ups and downs and so do firemen. And uh, they stay with you as long as you're straightforward and honest with them. And they're honest with us and they, they are, they're community minded. <laughs> After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough, but a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mm -hmm. And welcome back to Central Lion as we get set for the opening tip here. Thank Coach Girlman for joining me again for our last interview of the season as this is our last home game regardless of what uh, is happening with the, 
during this game. Let's take a look at the last five games for both these teams. Boyden Hall is 3-2 and two in their last five games. They have a win at Hinton in the district quarterfinals. That was a 52-39 win. A win at home versus Sheldon, 52-46. A loss at home versus Sioux Center, 60-52. A loss at West Lyons, 72-44. And a win at Okaboji, 56-49. The Lions are perfect 5-0 in their last five games. They have a win at home last week Thursday against Rock Valley. That was uh, 91-53. And then a win uh, last Tuesday at home versus George Lorock, 87-41. A win at Sioux Center, 76-62. A win at Sibley Cheaton, 86-26. And then a win at home versus Sioux Center, 86-53. Serious history between these two teams. Boyne Hall has won seven of the last ten meetings, but Central Line did win the uh, two games this season, the first one was 79-38, and the second one was 78-57. Looking at the Sioux Line Conference standings for uh, this year, Central Lion, as uh, we said in our interview, the uh, outright champion, 18-1 overall record. Boyne Hall was tied, they finished tied with Okaboji for seventh place as they both had six and 12 records in the Sioux Line Conference play. Something new this year, the Boys Association is putting out rankings. The final rankings for Class 2A, you see Central Lion ranked number one in Class 2A and West Lion ranked number 10. The only other team ranked is MOC Floyd Valley. They are ranked number three in Class 3A. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both of these teams. First, for Boyden Hall. Oh, sorry, let's go through our key players first before we do that. Key player for Boyden Hall is going to be the freshman, Carter Klein Wolterink. Averages 13 points per game, shoots 41% from the field, averages 5.8 rebounds, 2.1 assists, and 1.1 steals. Klein Wolterink is the team leader in scoring and rebounds. For Central Lion, key player of the game is going to be a senior, Josh Elbert. Elbert averages 5.1 points per game, shoots 29% from the field. Averages 3.5 rebounds, 3.3 assists, and one steal per game. We will take a short break, and we'll be back with our starting lineups as uh, we are about set for the national anthem. As you're watching Lions basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. Coach, 62. First out. We're doing this so that the kids can continue to play. Like we used to enjoy playing when I was in high school. I understand how fun it was, and I want that same fun to be had by the kids now. So that's why we need more officials to keep these games going on. Here's to welcoming moments, big and small. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you with care and coverage. Partner with Avera for more hellos, more hugs, more memories. We'll move you forward through sickness and health and every milestone in between. Hello possibility, hello healthy, hello life. Avera, moving health forward. Denoble Austin & Company PC Certified Public Accountants offers a variety of services including payroll, auditing, sales tax, financial statement preparation, and of course, income taxes. Whether you're a farmer, small or large business owner, or just require some assistance with your personal finances, Denoble Austin & Company PC can save you time and peace of mind with the skills you need and the service you expect. Located in Rock Rapids and Laverne. When the world changes, you change with it. By embracing new rhythms, redefining connection, and taking less for granted, you push through the uncertainty. And at every point along the way, we stand with you. Because even when your world looks different, our commitment to your care 
stays the same. Sanford Health. Health lives here. And back here in Rock Rapids, uh, starting lineups tonight for the Boyne Hall Comets. Number two, senior Kaysom Wolber. Number five, senior Brock Fisher. Number 10, Nate Van Otterloo, a junior. Number 15, Blake Mosier, a freshman. And number 21, Carter Klein Walter, a freshman. For your Lions, Josh Elbert, a senior. Reese Vanderzee, a junior. Zach Lutmer, a senior. Andrew Austin, a senior. And Ephraim Hofert, a sophomore. My apologies for not getting that in pregame. Lions start with the ball. Reese Vanderzee on open three. The assist from Andrew Austin and Lions on the board here early. Klein Waltrig with it there. Wolber has it now, being guarded by Hofer. Dribble drive, cut off. That's Mosier with it. A little bump there, and Mosier up, and Blake Mosier, the junior, gets Boyne Hall on the board. Tough man-to-man -to -man defense here being going to be played by both teams. Shot fake there by Vanderzee. Kicks out to Austin over to Josh Elbert. Josh Elbert wide open for three. No good. Vanderzee up with rebound. No good. Andrew Austin with the rebound. And Austin up and in. Andrew Austin leading rebounder on the team for the Lions. 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. Also second on the team in scoring at 20.1 points per game. Klein Waltrink there. Guarded by Vanderzee, and that one almost off of Klein Waltering, but they say Vanderzee touched it last. So Boyd Hall will inbound underneath their own basket. Klein Waltering kicks out to Wolber. Open three point attempt. Case and Wolber. And we're tied up at five. Vanderzee in the corner knocks down the three. Lions do shoot the three-point ball very good from their starters. Vanderzee averages 49% from behind the arc on the season. There's Klein Waltering for a three. No good. Rebound down to Andrew Austin. And Austin will push things here for Lions. Kicks it to Elbert. Elbert gets it to Vanderzee. And Vanderzee at the rim. No good. But another rebound by Andrew Austin. And Austin up with the layup. Quick 10 points here for the Lions. That's Wolber with it now. No good. Rebound down to Josh Elbert. Elbert almost loses it off his own shoe. Lutmer gets it. Dumped down now to Austin. Austin will spin baseline. Put up the shot and blocked by Brock Fisher. But unfortunately for Boyne Hall, they knock it out of bounds instead of being able to grab it. Eric Nils into the game. He'll give Van Arlu a quick break. Lions get it in. Over to Vanderzee in the corner. This time, Vanderzee goes right at the rim. And Reese Vanderzee, eight quick points. Vanderzee is third on the team in scoring. He averages 17.3 points per game. Lions are basically, they have a big three. And then a bunch of role players. Obviously, those uh, role players do a very good job of knowing what they're supposed to be doing as Lions are 19-1 and one overall in the season. Vanderzee gets it down to Andrew Austin. Back over to Vanderzee, wide open three-point attempt. And Reese Vanderzee is on fire. Vanderzee, 11 points in the first three minutes. Coach Heyer will take a timeout. We'll take it with him. We're watching Lions basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Cipreda Foltz Insurance and Real Estate in Rock Rapids, Iowa, if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. Back here in Rock Rapids. Take a look at District 15 bracket. On Monday, Boyden Hall defeated Hinton in the district quarterfinals. 53 to 39, and Unity Christian defeated MVAOCOU 63 to 24. So the four teams left here in District 15: Central Lion Boyden Hall, and on the bottom side, West Sioux and Unity Christian. Lions came out with a little pressure there. Boyden Hall lost control for a second. Lions tied up. Boyden Hall possession on the possession arrow. 
by Walter and gets into Wolber. A little confusion by the Lions, and Wolber knocks down the three. Like Coach Gerlman said in the pregame interview, you can't just let them have wide open threes. Dump down to Lutmer. Lutmer over to Josh Elbert, wide open as Lutmer was double teamed. Good job there as Lutmer, who leads the team in assists at just under six assists per game, gets it over to Elbert. That one blocked. Wolber chases it down. Out of Klein Walter Inc. Back over to Wolber. Fisher with it now. And almost stolen away. Nils has that one knocked out of bounds off of Lutmer. And then no one to get it into, and the Lions will steal the inbound pass. Lutmer. No good. And now here comes Klein Walterink. And a travel is the call. Klein Walterink tried to go with the Euro step, but he travels. Albert with it down the corner. Another dump down to Lutmer. Jump ball is the call. Lions will maintain possession on the possession arrow. Albert to inbound. Nice inbound play and Vanderzee up and in and he is fouled. That foul, I believe, was on Eric Nils, number 11. Yes, his first, team's first. And Vanderzee, 64% free throw shooter. Makes it. Extends the lead out to 12 now, 20 to 8 for the Lions. Klein Walter Inc. over to Wolver. That's Fisher with it. Black over, back over to Mosier. Mosier drives right. And foul will be called on Elberts. So Josh Elbert, uh, Matt Elbert, his younger brother, just checked in the game for the Lions. Josh Elbert draws the first foul of the game for the Lions. And Nils there, caught the Lions sleeping. And a half court lob to Reese Vanderzee. And Vanderzee, 16 points of the 22 here early. Wolber on, cut off by Matt Elbert. There's Fisher. He's cut off by Matt. Nils with it again. Blocked by, El by uh, Lutmer. Lions now will look to push. Kick out to Austin. Over to Lutmer. Zach Lutmer for a three. And Lutmer nails the three. Ryan Waltrank with it, looking for a screen, nothing going there. That's Mosier with it. Nils has it, or back over to Mosier. Klein Waltrank now. And foul is called on Vanderzee. Could have gone either way as Klein Waltrank had his shoulder into Reese's waist. Ryland Tiedemann will check in for the first time for the Comets. He'll give Nils a break. Comets get it into Mosier. Back over to Tiedemann now. Screen set for Klein Waltrink. They get it over to, that's Wolber. Another screen. Looking for a little pick and roll action. Lions covered up well. Fisher with it. He takes a jump shot. No good. And Klein Waltrink. Nobody boxed out. So the freshman and Carter Klein Waltrink gets his First bucket of the evening. Klein Walterink leads the team with 13 points per game. That one really tough angle there for Austin as he was almost behind the basket. Lions with the steal though on the tip. Spin move, Lutmer up and in. No 
Mosier gets it over to Wolber. That's Tiedemann now. Back over to Fisher, Klein Walter Inc. Back to Fisher. That's Mosier for a three. And Blake Mosier knocks down the triple. Reese Vanerzee, heat check. Vanerzee, 19 points. Reese Vanerzee, 19. Boyden Hall, 15. As Vanerzee already passed his season average of 17 points per game with 19 in the first quarter. Wolber, Wolber spin move, nothing there out to Tiedemann. Tiedemann goes baseline and Tiedemann is knocked away. Ephraim Hofer back into the game for Josh Elbert. Shot clock will not reset. There's no change of possession, so still 18 seconds left here for the Comets. Look for a screen for Klein Walterink. Over to Wolber. There's Mosier. Four seconds left, three. Tough shot, no good, and Fisher with the tough rebound. Blocked by Andrew Austin. Last 10 seconds. And Lutmer hammered by Tiedemann. You see here the block by Andrew Austin leading to a run out. And Lutmer finishes at the rim. Lutmer's free throw, no good. Lutmer, a 76% free throw shooter. Klein Waltrank will take a three at the buzzer. Ooh, that looked good. That was right in front of us. Good attempt there by Klein Waltrank. But the Lions will take a 32-15 advantage in the second quarter here on the CL Broadcast Network. My grandpa came over here. That's why we're here. Just friendly people. The staff, the whole group. Uh, makes you feel like you're part of a family. And if you know a fireman at all, you need a banker. They have their ups and downs and so do firemen. And uh, they stay with you as long as you're straightforward and honest with them. And they're honest with us. And they, they are, they're community minded. <laughs> After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough. But a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mm -hmm. Back here in Rock Rapids as we get set for start of the second quarter. Make sure we thank our sponsors, Frontier Bank, Pizza Ranch, Premier Bank, Avera Medical Group, Denoble Austin Company PC, Pepsi Beverage Company, Sanford Health, and Seaport of Fultz Insurance and Real Estates. One hole start with the ball here as they trail by 17. Klein Walterink. Lions playing a little bit of a zone. Klein Walterink for three. Might have been tipped there. That one is tipped around, and Andrew Austin comes up with it. Push ahead to Matt Darren, who checked in at the break. Vanderzee and Reese Vanderzee on the dribble drive. Klein Waltrink there over to Fisher. Lions still playing a little 2-3 zone. Something I saw them working out in practice the other day. Been playing a little bit more zone last few games than they had earlier in the season. Fisher up with it, no good. And Vanderzee, no, they will call a jump ball. As Reese Vanderzee thought he tore that away from Klein Waltrink in time. Either way, central line ball. Remind everyone, leave us a little note in the chat, on the YouTube chat. Let us know where you're watching from or send me a text message. If you have my phone number. Vanderzee shot fake and then Reese Vanderzee puts it up and in. Lions are going to fall back into the 2-3. That one almost stolen away. 
Mosier with it now. Gets it into Fisher. Over to Klein Walter Inc. He goes baseline. And blocked from behind by Ephraim Hofert. That's the thing with this zone. The Lions go Reese Vanders, E6'4. Andrew Austin, 6'5. Ephraim Hofert, 6'5 on the bottom. Long arms there. Makes it hard to get passes in. Three point attempt by Nate Van Otterloo, no good. Lions now on offense. Darren with it over to Hofert. Lutmer, a little hesitation dribble, no good. Rebound comes down to Van Otterloo. My Walter Inc. with it now. They get into Fisher. There's Mosier, wide open three pointer, and Blake Mosier. That is his second three pointer of the evening. Lions get into Vanderzee. Biden guarded by Van Arlu. Vanderzee Van just goes up, tries to go over him. A little too much on that one. Wolber with it down low. Turn around jump shot. Good. Back down to a 16 point lead. Darren with it over to Lutmer. Get into Austin. See Austin go to work down low. Andrew Austin up and good over Mosier. Or sorry, that's Fisher. As Boyden Hull doesn't have any heights listed. But uh, I'm going to say that Austin's got at least a three inch height advantage over Brock Fisher. And there's Klein Walterink with a three. Another lob attempt. No good that time, but Vanders, he gets it up anyway. No good, and on the rebound attempt, it's knocked away, and Fisher gets it. A little slow start here to the quarter for the Lions. Fisher stops, and there's the, the height advantage of Austin. Fisher just kind of threw that one quick because Austin otherwise would have blocked it. Forces the miss. And then Austin gets called for a push. Josh Albert checks in the game, gives Darren a break. Andrew Austin's first foul of the game, third on the Lions. Fisher with it out top, over to Van Arlu. Van Arlu, no good, Andrew Austin down with the rebound. Andrew Austin, shot fake, and Austin's fouled. No good, but he'll go to the free throw line. As Austin takes it right at Klein Waltering here, you see on the replay. As our, one of our producers, Gabe Hansen, bringing you replays tonight, as Jason Heiser is bringing you graphics. First free throw short for Austin. Andrew Austin, a 70% free throw shooter on the season. And Austin makes one of two. Wolber with it over the corner there, dribbles up top over to Klein Walterink. Over to Fisher. That's Van Otterloo. No, that's Mosier now. Now Wolber has it. Dribble drive, layup, and good layup there by the senior, Kaysen Wolber. Again, Lions beat everyone down the court, and easy layup, Reese Vanderzee. One thing the Lions do really well, doesn't matter if it's make or miss, they will push the pace. And Van Adelou gets the easy bucket as his defender left him. Dump down to Vanderzee. Vanderzee gets that one blocked and he still gets it in. As Reese Vanderzee had that one knocked out of his hands, grabs it, puts it back up. Vanderzee with 27. Klein Waltrink. The Comet swing it to Wolber. Now over to Fisher. Wolber in the corner. 15 left on the shot clock. Blake Mosier. 
Looking for Fisher. That one's not tipped, and there'll be a turnover. Ryland Tiedemann back in the game for the Comets. Matt Dinger, or sorry, Matt Elbert back in the game for the Lions. Lutmer just inside the three-point line, and Zach Lutmer with a two-pointer. Nine points so far tonight for Lutmer. That is according to our unofficial stats, being kept by Caleb Quaker and Egan Peterson, as Egan is also running the video board here in the gym for everyone. Wolber gets trapped, gets it over to Fisher, looking for a screen and roll from Tiedemann. Fisher, spin move. Now he's trapped here, not trapped really, but gave up his dribble. Now Wolber, baseline, cut off, and that one's stolen away. Here comes Lutmer. No good, Andrew Austin with the rebound, and Andrew Austin puts it up and in. Thirty-second timeout, we'll stay here. We'll talk a little bit about our upcoming events here on the CL Broadcast Network. We only have one, and that's tomorrow, as the Varsity Girls will be back in the Jim, they will play West Sioux in the regional semifinals here. That will be the last home game of the year for boys and girls basketball. Tonight's the last home game of the year for the boys. Tomorrow will be for the girls. The winner of tonight, they will play the winner of West Sioux and Unity Christian next Tuesday, February 21st at 7 p.m. That site is yet to be determined. See a couple messages. Audrey Weiler watching. I believe Weilers are in Florida. And Jessica Jensen. Watching as they were coming back from the state's uh, wrestling tournament, Terry Van Burkham also sending me a text saying he's watching. Well, when we get a chance, we will talk a little bit about the state wrestling tournament for both CLGLR and Boynton Hall Rock Valley. As each team has some wrestlers still alive down at the state. Austin almost with the steal, but gets his hands kind of, his arm kind of caught in between there and uh, commits the foul. That is his second. Lions, very hot from the field. They are shooting 20 of 31 for 65%. One Hall also not shooting bad. They're shooting 11 for 26, which is good for 42%. One Hall also shooting 50%, 5 for 10 from the three-point line, but the Lions are 5 of 6 from the three-point line. And we are down to our last minute 35 here in this second quarter. Lions back in that 2-3 zone. Seedman with it down low. Puts up a wild shot, no good. Blocked from behind by Austin as, again, Austin with a huge height advantage. Austin doesn't even really have to jump. He's just got a big, big advantage. Skip pass to Lutmer in the corner, no good. Rebound comes down to Klein Waltrink. Klein Waltrink, it's a screen set for him and a three-pointer, and it's up and in. So the freshman now with eight points. Unofficially, three rebounds and three assists as well. There's Vanderzee. Misses the dunk, and Vanderzee. Not only not good, but then Austin commits the foul. That is going to be Andrew Austin's third. Team only has five fouls. Andrew Austin has committed three of them. That one was pretty obvious. So Andrew will go to the bench here for the last minute of the quarter. Mosier gets it over to Fisher. That one's stolen away from Wolbert by Josh Elbert. Lions now four seconds, about five seconds to be differential between the shot clock and the play clock. Say hi to Cheryl Van Beek watching from Des Moines and Jeremy Clausen as well. Jeremy watching, probably not on his deck. It's a little cold to be out there yet, but uh, be out there soon enough. Lions find Lutmer wide open down low. Spin move and Lutmer up and in. Lions got to watch Klein Waltering here. He's got good range. But the buzzer, no good. So Lions finish with a bucket. Extend their lead out to 19. A little slower of a quarter. Lions 
scored 17 points in the second quarter. Boyne Hall has scored 15 and 15. The Lions have that 19 point lead. We will go to halftime here as uh, we have a halftime interview with the uh, only senior we have left and that's Gina Grone, who is a senior manager for the boys basketball team. So we'll have an update, uh, an interview with her. And then uh, we'll also have some halftime highlights put together by Jason and Gabe. And we'll be back with the second half here on the CL Broadcast Network. Welcome to the Lions Den, where we get to know our student athletes a little more in depth. Today, I'm joined by Jana Groen. Jana, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Mr. Cruz. All right, Jana, let's start in the classroom. Uh, a senior here, what is your class schedule like this second semester? I start out in band, and then I have a nice study hall where I do a college class through NCC. Then I go to probably my hardest class, AP Calc, but it's super duper fun. I highly encourage everybody to take it. Um, fourth and fifth hour, I have a work study at the county attorney's office, and I'm loving it there. Sixth hour, I have Spanish. Seventh hour is human anatomy, physiology, and then eighth hour is college comp. All right, busy schedule. Mm -hmm. um, now, you are obviously a senior here, like I said, um, and you're a manager for the boys' basketball team. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about what that role all entails. So it's mostly what you probably think it is. I do a lot of jersey washing, towel washing. I do a lot of picking up after them. Uh, we kind of call ourselves the momagers because we clean up after <laughs> them like they're a bunch of toddlers sometimes. But uh, we fold jerseys, we fold towels, we fill water bottles. But we also keep stats. We do book for JV, JVR. We do varsity bound stats. And uh, Girlman told us one time that he trusts us more than Huddle. So. <laughs> <laughs> So he wants you guys to break them down? Yes. Yeah. Is, uh, folks at home may not know this, but Huddle offers a, a product called Huddle Assist where they'll break down your, right. your games for you and do stats. Um, uh, having seen them before, they don't always do it. For football, we don't let Huddle do our own stats Oh, either. absolutely not. We go back and have to redo them ourselves just to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't our script here, but when you said that in Mama Jersey, now who exactly would be the worst one on the team as far as – having to pick up after. I, I have my, my sneaky suspicion on who it might be, but you tell me who you think is the worst. Not the worst player, just you know, the worst one that always forgets things or always needs things picked up for him. Um, this year they've actually been a lot better. Last year they left a lot of stuff. Um, I'd say it'd have to be between like Zach or Andrew because Zach left his shoes already before <laughs> one game this year. And uh, Andrew, I think he forgot his warm-up one time. Yep, that doesn't surprise me. No, no that, it's not. <laughs> that's uh, exactly, ever have, having coached both of them, that's probably who I would guess, Zach especially. Um, just, yeah, not, like I said, they're, not, they're, they're good kids. They, just, they are. They're, sometimes they're, they are, uh, they're needy when it comes to those <laughs> sorts of things. They, they need someone to, to make sure that the things get yes, done. Yes, 100% agree with that. <laughs> now, uh, besides being a manager on the basketball team, what other things are you involved in here at school and uh, out in the community? Uh, I volunteer at my church, Club 512. Gosh, I can't speak today. Um, I do pep club, chess club, girls book club. Uh, golf team? Yes, the golf team. I almost forgot about that yeah, one. That's probably the most <laughs> impressive one as <laughs> yes. as a two-time, or not two-time runner-up, one-time runner-up, and third last year, fourth yes, last year? third last year. Third last year, so... Uh, yeah, the golf team. Yes. We, don't, we don't broadcast <laughs> any of the golf. We don't do a whole no. lot of broadcast during that time in the school year, but the uh, last couple of years have been very successful with the girls' yes, golf Yes, we have really enjoyed it, and we moved up to 2A this year, so we're really oh, hoping to okay. go back. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, we are. it's still February, so we still got a little bit of time left in the school year, yeah. but uh, do you know what your plans are for next year? I'm going to attend the University of Iowa and major in psychology on the pre-law track. Oh, nice. I, I uh you're like the we had like three or four kids going to university yes, of iowa yes we do okay, mm -hmm. maybe we'll, we'll we'll stay in iowa normally in the last few years it's been sdsu 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 yes. great school but mm -hmm. iowa's a good school too i referred to sdsu as central and north <laughs> it's a great school but i know too many people there there are a lot of people there in the last four to five years especially yes um now Let's talk about basketball for you to wrap things up. What what do you like best about being part of the team? Because you really are a part of the team. You're not a basketball player, but I, as a coach, I know the managers are almost as important as mm -hmm. at least, especially at least as an assistant coach. Um, what do you what do you like best about being part of the team, or what's your uh, favorite memory you have? Uh, I think probably the best part is just being like on the bench in the game, and then uh, last year when we played West, 
West Lion, you could just see, like, Girlman has this vein in his forehead, and when he starts yelling, you can see it, like, bulging, so last year we could just see it popping out, and I was like, oh my gosh, is it going to, like, blow up? Like, And then I got a text from his wife and was like, can you tell him to calm down? His blood pressure is too high. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, but that's probably one of my favorite memories. All right. It's uh, always good to have fun memories. Absolutely. Well, Jane, I want to thank you for taking some time to join us today. And uh, now back to the booth after a word from our sponsors. Here's to welcoming moments, big and small. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you, with care and coverage. Partner with Avera for more hellos, more hugs, more memories. We'll move you forward through sickness and health and every milestone in between. Hello possibility, hello healthy, hello life. Avera, moving health forward. The Noble Austin & Company PC Certified Public Accountants offers a variety of services including payroll, auditing, sales tax, financial statement preparation, and of course, income taxes. Whether you're a farmer, small or large business owner, or just require some assistance with your personal finances, the Noble Austin & Company PC can save you time and peace of mind with the skills you need and the service you expect. Located in Rock Rapids and Laverne. When the world changes, you change with it by embracing new rhythms, redefining connection, and taking less for granted. You push through the uncertainty, and at every point along the way, we stand with you. Because even when your world looks different, our commitment to your care stays the same. Sanford Health. Health lives here. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Cipreda Foltz Insurance and Real Estate in Rock Rapids, Iowa, if Auto Owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. Welcome to the Lions Den.
Welcome back to Rock Rapids as we get set for start of our third quarter. Say hi to all the play, all the uh, people from Rock Rapids and George and Little Rock that are watching from the state wrestling tournament down in Des Moines. I got a picture sent from Stacy Darren. I saw a whole bunch of people. You guys, you should all pull your phones out and pull it up. You guys are killing our, our viewership by, by all sitting in the same room. You got you got to you guys, everyone get their phone out real quick and turn it on so we can see our uh, our statistics go up. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, thank everyone for watching. As soon as we get an opportunity, I'll give everyone an update on uh, the wrestlers. As uh, MLC will start with the ball. Or, sorry, MLC. Boyne Hall will start with the ball here. Climb wall, drink, wild shot there. Austin down with the rebound. Lutmer bumped, and that is going to be on the floor. Now, no shot. Lines well inbound as that foul was on. Blake Mosier, the junior, his first. Team's first here in the second half. Lions swing it over to Vanderzee, and Vanderzee. <laughs> Call for the charge. There is no uh, restrictive circle in high school. So even though Vanderzee basically let go of the ball and then hit the defender, they uh, still called that a charge, but there's no... Uh, not like college or the NBA where there are, sometimes there's a line that you have to be in front of to get the call. Long three-pointer, no good there by Van Otterloo. Lions down with the rebound. They're going to look to push because that's what they do. Screen set for Lutmer. Three-point attempt, no good. Klein Waltering down with the rebound. And Ephraim Hofert forces the turnover. Remind everyone, we'll be back in action tomorrow night. Final home game of the year. Central Line girls will welcome in the West Sioux girls in a regional semifinals game. Lutmer has that one poked away from him. Fisher got the rebound. Wolber, no good on the drive. Here comes Lutmer. Wolber's behind him. Top taps it away. Good hustle there by Wolber. Now Klein Walterink gets the layup. Vanerzy with it into Austin, but Austin is shoved. Lions inbound underneath their own basket. And poked away. That was, I believe, Van Otterloo who got his hand on it. Fisher was the recipient. And Van Otterloo with a nifty layup. So Boyne Hall comes out and scores the first four points here of the third quarter. And they've got this down to a 15-point ball game. Lions dumped down to Austin. Swung over to Ephraim Hofert. Hofert for three. No good. And... Klein Waltrink with it out top, looking for a screen. Over to Fisher. And Fisher up and in as Andrew Austin draws his fourth foul. Or not draws, commits his fourth foul. Matt Albert will check in for him. Brock Fisher, the senior. Go up for his and one opportunity, and it's up and in. Fisher, a 58% free throw shooter on the year. Josh Elbert over to Hofert, now down to Lutmer. Over to Matt Darren. Lions swing it to Vanderzee. Now Josh Elbert. There's Hofert. Hofert with another three. And looks like a foul will be called on... Carter Klein Waltering for a hold on the box out attempt. That is Klein Waltering's first foul. Third on the team. Lions getting into Lutmer. Mismatch if they've got Fisher on Lutmer. Now they switch off. Ofert over to Lutmer. Jab step, three point in. It's in for Zach Lutmer. 
Coach Jerome takes a quick timeout, 30 second timeout. We'll stay here. We'll take this opportunity to thank our sponsors Frontier Bank, Pizza Ranch, Premier Bank, Avera Medical Group, Denoble Austin and Company PC, the Pepsi Beverage Company, Sanford Health, and Seabird Fultz Insurance and Real Estate. Once again, thank everyone for watching. I see uh, Jessica Jensen telling me she's on Highway 20. Yep, that's watching or slash listening to this game would be a little bit more interesting than just traveling on the highway there. See AJ Austin, that's uh, the a relative of Andrew Austin and Reese Vander Z. Vander three, yes. My wife is watching as uh, well from Des Moines as she is a, uh, a wrestling cheerleader coach. And I see uh, Kerry Borman also watching. Lions have led by as many as 19, currently up by 15 here. Fisher has it. Van Otterloo, left hand up and the spinning shot is up and in. Lutmer over to Albert. Josh Albert, that is. That one almost stolen by Fisher. Lutmer, no good. And up and in is Albert, and Albert's fouled as Klein Walterink commits a second foul here. You see in the replay, Klein Walterink kind of good there, but he didn't see Josh Albert, and just unfortunately for Klein Walterink, basically just ran into Josh, never saw him. Albert's free throw is up and in. Albert, a 56% free throw shooter on the year. Josh Albert, that is, as both Alberts are in the game, Matt and Josh. Mosier over to Wolber. There's Klein Waltrink. Looking for a screen. Doesn't use it. Ball over to Fisher now. Now Klein Waltrink. Long three point attempt, Carter Klein Waltrink. And Lutmer. Unable to corral the rebound. Momentarily called central line ball. It was obviously out on Zach. So Lutmer knocks that one out of bounds. Klein Waltrink with it. Has that one blocked by Josh Elbert. Josh Elbert, a defensive specialist for the Lions. Vanders, you shot fake. Back over to Lutmer. Now Matt Elbert over to Hofert. Josh Elbert. Now Lutmer in the corner. Dump down to Reese Vanders. Vanders, and Vanders gets it up and in. Vanders, first two points of the second half. Klein Waltrink over to Fisher. Mosier. Dribble drive. Out to Van Otterloo. And Van Otterloo gets his pocket picked, and Van Otterloo holds Lutmer. So Lutmer can't get the breakaway layup. That is the third foul on Nate Van Otterloo. Fifth on the Comets this half. Lumber gets a screen from El Josh Elbert, puts up a three, no good. Rebound down to Mosier. Wolber with a top of the key now. And foul committed by Matt Elbert. Eric Nils back into the game for the Comets along with Matt Darren for the Lions. Blake Mosier from the corner, no good. Rebound down to Nils. Out to Klein Waltrink now. Klein Waltrink with a hand in his face, no good. And Matt Elbert skies for the rebound. Lions find Vanderzee down low. That one hits the back, front, back, and then bounces out. Fisher gets the uh, rebound. Klein Waltrink with it now in the corner. And Klein Waltrink with a nice jump shot there. As he is one point away from his season average. And Klein Waltrink with a steal. Still a 16-point lead here. 
That one on the floor. Foul is going to be called on Josh Elbert. Comets will inbound underneath their own basket. They get into Fisher. Jump shot by Fisher, and it's up and in. Matt Albert over to Lutmer. Now Vanerzy with it. Back out to Josh Elbert. Josh Elbert, wide open three point attempt, in and out. That was halfway down. As Lutmer onto his knees to Vanderzy, and Vanderzy down with the stuff. Timeout taken. You see here on the replay. Good effort here is a lazy pass by the Comets. Not something you're used to seeing them do. Leads to a two-handed stuff by Reese Vanderzee. And Vanderzee now with 31 points here in this game. We'll take this opportunity. Let's talk about a little bit about how the state wrestling is going. Boyne Hall Rock Valley sent six wrestlers down there. At 113 pounds, Gabino Var Vargas is done for the, his tournament. Went two and two. At 145, Brock Mulder still alive. He is three and one. He's in the consolation side. 160, Zach Struby is also 3-1. He's on the consolation side. Then you have Jace Mulder at 182. He won his first two and then lost his last one today. He is on the consolation side. At 220, Regan Masson went 0-2, and, and he is done. And at 285, Josue Garcia went 2-2, two and, two and he is day, his tournament is also done. For the Lions, you have Regan Hashi at 126. He unfortunately lost both of his matches yesterday and today, so his tournament's over. Lane Kruger at 138 had the same fate. And then Lane's cousin, Evan, at 195. Also, is his tournament is over. But Trevor Darren for the Lions, 2-1 and one so far, and is alive on the consolation side as that is Blake Mosier with the triple. Down to a 13-point lead now for the Lions. There's Matt Albert with it over to Reese Vanders. He thought about it. Wouldn't blame Reese for taking any shot tonight. Over to Matt Elbert. Matt Elbert will load up a three, no good, and the rebound comes down to Mosier. Fine Walterink with it. Fine Walterink doesn't seem to want to use screens. I'm not sure what they're doing. Fisher has been up there a lot, but he has yet to actually use one of those screens. Lions with a steal. Lutmer takes the contact, no good, but he tips it out to Josh Elbert. And Elbert who takes the contact, and that will be called on the foul, or sorry, on the ground. See here on the replay, Lutmer knew he didn't make it, so he just got it out and tipped it away. That is the third foul on Klein Walterink. Say hi to Amy Kim, watching from Bangladesh, and Josh Hunt, watching from Salina, Kansas tonight. That one no good. Josh Elbert steals it away. Out to Reese Vanderzee. Vanderzee pump fakes, then puts up the three, and of course, it goes in because Reese is five for five from three point land tonight. 34 points for the junior. Fisher, and a charge. So the Comets draw a charge. Earlier in the quarter, now the Lions draw a charge. Seventh team foul, but it is not a shooting foul. Tiedemann will check in for Klein Walterink. As Coach Heyer, knowing that Klein Walterink, his best scorer, has three fouls, he doesn't need to pick up his last with 10 seconds left to go in the third quarter here. Lutmer spin, and Lutmer gets it up and in. Tiedemann, that's good if it goes, no good. And the Lions back out to an 18-point lead, 64-46. We'll head to the fourth quarter here on the CL Broadcast Network. My grandpa came over here. That's why we're here. Just friendly people. The staff, the whole group. Uh, makes you feel like you're part of a family. And if you know a fireman at all, you need a banker. They have their ups and downs and so do farming. And uh, they stay with you. 
as long as you're straightforward and honest with them and they're honest with us and they they are they're community minded After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough, but a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mmm, mmm. And we're back here at Central Line High School for the start of the fourth quarter. The Lions will start with the ball and an 18-point lead. Hofert over to Matt Elbert. Back out to Hofert. They swing it now to this side with Josh Elbert. There's Lutmer. Long three-point attempt. is over back to Lutmer, and Lutmer nails it. So Lutmer now 19 points. He is just a point off of his average. He averages 20.4 points per game. Wolber with it. Spin move. Cut off by the Lions. Fisher thought about that one. Now there's Mosier back over to Wolber. Wolber will take the three and no good. Rebound comes down to Josh Elbert. Randersy with it in the corner. Lions swing it over to Lutmer on this side. Thought about that one. Gout swings it now back over to Matt Elbert. Now Lutmer at the top of the key. Josh Elbert. Reese Vanderzy over to Matt Elbert. Lions moving the ball well, not getting any open shots. Josh Elbert over to Vanderzy. Vanderzy elevates, no good. Rebound comes down to Blake Mosier. Fisher. Guess it's a Nils. That one popped out there. Now Mosier with it out top. Mosier from the free throw line, no good. Black, Brock Fisher with the rebound, and Brock Fisher gets his seventh point of the game. Hofert with it now over, that's Matt Elbert to his brother Josh Elbert, the top key. He gets Steph from Hofert, back over to Josh Elbert, Matt Elbert now, as the Lions are trying to look for Vayner Z or Lutmer down low. Reese Vanderzee stops from three-pointer and no good. Wolber down on the rebound. Klein Walterink on the dribble drive and good layup there by Carter Klein Walterink. Good looking freshman for the Comets is Klein Walterink. Hofert with it now. Lions get it over to Elbert, or sorry, that's Lutmer in the corner. And oh, that is Lutmer, he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. See there on the replay. Wolber commits the foul. Lutmer to go to the line. Lutmer shoots 76% on the Season from the charity strike. He knocks the first one down as Andrew Austin checks back in the game for Central Lion. And Lutmer makes them both. So Lutmer with 21. Wolber has it thrown right to Reese Vanderzee. And Vanderzee up and in. 36 points now for Reese Vanderzee tonight. It's kind of been a, a race to the top for the Lion. Lion top three between Vanderzee, Austin, and Lutmar, and who can get to 20 points first each night. Nils has got some blood he needs to take care of. He'll go see the Avera trainer. Not sure who the trainer is tonight as our normal trainer, uh, Brandon Church, is not here. Not sure who his uh, substitute is. 
But as always, thanking Avera for providing that service free of charge to Central Lion and all of Central Lion athletes. Fisher dribbles baseline, goes up with it over Elbert and Brock Fisher. That is his ninth point of the evening. One thing you know, Boynton Hall is not going to give up a very, very proud and storied basketball program. Anybody who's been around the Siouxland for any amount of time knows that, as they will keep fighting to the end here. Andrew Austin, as he spun baseline, gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Austin's first free throw of the evening is up and in as he is a 70% free throw shooter on the season. Austin with four fouls. He's been sat on the bench for the majority of this second half. Knocks them both down. Austin leading, leads the team in rebounds and second in scoring. Mosier, three-pointer no good. Rebound comes down to Andrew Austin. Hofert now, the push ahead from Lutmer, no good. Josh Elbert gets a rebound back up to Hofert, and then that shot no good by Andrew Austin. Fisher will get the rebound. Fisher with it, dribble drive. Kick out to Van Arlu and Nate Van Arlu with a three-pointer. Back where we started this quarter with an 18-point lead for the Lions. Hofer gets to Lutmer. Lutmer goes baseline. Good seal there by Andrew Austin. As his defender was topside, Lutmer went baseline and Andrew just kind of stood there and Shielded his, his defender off so he couldn't help. Lutmer now 23 points. Klein Walter Inc. goes baseline, cut off by Josh Elbert. And that will be Central Line basketball. Once again, the winner of tonight will play the winner of West Sioux and Unity Christian. Site yet to be determined. Probably going to be Sioux Center. That would be our guess. Not very many high schools between uh, us and Unity or West Sioux as Vanderzee is fouled. As I was saying, not very many high schools in between us and those two schools that make sense to host a district final. As that is the fifth foul on Nate Van Aderloo, so he is out of the game. Ryland Tiedemann back in for the Comets. Vanerzy's first free throw up and in. Not a lot of free throws in this game. Lions are 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Boyne Hall is just 1 of 1. Klein Walterink again doesn't use that screen. Lions have kind of figured that out. They don't even really hedge on it anymore. That shot is blocked. Not sure what is going on here. We got one official saying white ball, the one that was right in front of it. Another official came in, overruled them, and then we stood here for 30 seconds. And the officials just said white, black, white ball, black ball, white ball, black ball. Either way, it's going to be Boyne Hall. As Mosier is fouled on the drop on the drive, he'll go to the free throw line. Blake Mosier second on the team in scoring. That apparently wasn't a shooting foul. All right. So Boyne Hall inbound. Fisher gets it. Takes it right at Austin. As Austin's got four fouls. 
And Brock Fisher gets it up and in. Smart move there by Fisher. Knows that Austin can't really do much defensively if he wants to stay in the game. Hofert swings it to Austin. Gets it down to Reese Vanderzee. Look for a little give and go there. And Vanderzee up and in. 40 points now, Reese Vanderzee. By Walter Inc. Has that one blocked. Lions get it. Andrew Austin. Spin and flush. Andrew now 13 points, 11 rebounds. Double-double for Andrew tonight. Also has six assists. Again, these are all unofficial. As our eighth graders that keep stats might be a little generous with the assists as they've given out 22 assists tonight. Though the Lions do move the ball very well, usually. Lions obviously going to take this one and uh, move on to the district final. Reminder, district final still has to, uh, final winners still have to win sub-state in order to qualify for the state tournament. As Austin. <laughs> Gets rejected by the rim there. He'll hit the line. See the foul there. Or sorry, see the uh, replay on the dunk from earlier. Andrew Austin will go to the line to shoot two. First one rolls in, and Austin now 14 points. He is the second leading scorer on the team with 20 points per game. Got to make sure I also say hi to my, my in-laws who are watching from Sioux Falls. And everyone else who is watching. This is, our, again, our last game of the season for the boys here in this gym, so we will be done with broadcasting. Thank our sponsors for supporting us all throughout the year. Those are Frontier Bank, Pizza Ranch, Premier Bank, Avera Medical Group, Denol Austin Company PC, Pepsi Beverage Company, Sanford Health, and Sepa DeFoltz Insurance and Real Estate. Looks like Coach Heyer is going to get some of the seniors in. Looks like number 13, Owen DeYoung. Number four, Landon Kelderman into the game. Coach Grillman will get some of his backup players in the game. Looks like he's going to get senior Ethan Hofert, senior Landon Thiessen, senior Riley Mayo, senior Lane Henriksen. So four seniors in for the Lions, and then uh, junior Reed Fulkin. So all the seniors into the game for both teams as season will come to an end as Ethan Hofert gets a two-pointer. Season will come to an end for Boyden Hall. Off year for them, but uh, they were Siouxland Conference champs last year, so. That one up and in for Owen DeYoung. Owen DeYoung, that's his first made basket of the year besides a free throw. So congratulations there to Owen, the senior. Always good to get your seniors in the game when you can. Boyden Hall fin will finish 9-14 and 14 overall this season. Lions will improve to 20-1. About two second differential between shot clock and game clock, so Lions will have to shoot here. Unless they just want to turn it over. But they got four seniors out there. They don't see the court all that much. They're gonna shoot the ball. Oh, blocked there by Landon Kelderman, and then the Lions throw it away. Also got the And there's Kelderman, no good. Rebound will come down to, to Reed Fulkins, and that'll do it. Central Lion will get the 85-61 victory. As they move on to the district finals, where they will face the winner of West Sioux and Unity Christian. Looking at some stats here, Boyne Hall shot 26 of 59 from the field for 44%. They were eight of 23 from long range and one of one from the free throw line. <clears throat> Excuse me, they were led by Carter Klein Walter Inc. 16 points and Brock Fisher with eight rebounds. Central on the other hand, 33 of 62 from the field for 53%, eight of 19 from behind the three point line. That was 42% for them and they were 11 for 13 from the free throw line. They were led by Reese Vanderzee with 40 points tonight, 27 of those coming in the first half. 
And then Andrew Austin, team leader in rebounds for the season, led them in rebounds tonight as well with 11. So again, the Lions in District 15 will face the winner of West Sioux and Unity Christian on Tuesday. We will let you know the site of that, hopefully tomorrow. There are a whole bunch of postponements in the state. The District 16, which you, the winner of our district, will play the winner of District 16 to go to state. Both of those games in District 16 between Underwood and Red Oak and Trainer and Clarinda were postponed. Those games will be tomorrow. So on the other half of these, this uh, substate, I don't know why the boys go 16 districts and eight substates instead of just eight big brackets to begin with, but that's how they do it. So District 15 and District 16 match up to go to state. That will be on February 25th, which is, uh, I believe, a Saturday, next Saturday, a week from this Saturday, that is. That winner will head to the state tournaments. So we want to thank everyone. I want to thank all of our workers up here. I had uh, Jason Heiser running uh, graphics, Gabe Hansen running the broadcast. Also had to get Bo Mayo to run the uh, video camera tonight. And then also thank our stat keepers, Egan Peterson and Caleb Quaker. For the broadcast crew here at Central Line, I'm Jeff Cruz. I want to thank you all, and we'll see you next time.